Hello everybody. Welcome to a second installment of Energy Intersections, I believe we're calling it. If you joined us two weeks ago, Miss Lauren Armstrong and I talked a little bit about human design kind of 101 and psychology as well. And just talking about the differences of, you know, kind of the way things are seen and energy and all sorts of good stuff. So let's jump in. Let me. Hey everybody, how you doing? How's it going? Hello. Hello. I'm going to back this up. <laughs> I know. I was like, how close do I need to be? And not get my fan in there. Hello. 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 So hello. Excited. How are you? Great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So today we thought we'd talk a little bit about making decisions, trauma responses, and authority from human design. And if everyone doesn't know, Lauren, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Lauren Armstrong, and I'm a human design um, business consultant. I went through the International Human Design School, BG5. And what we do there is we look at how you're energetically wired to uh, operate in the world and what you want to bring to it through a business. And we mesh those two things and like create offers and marketing programs and sell and do all that great stuff based on how you are wired to live. I love that. It's like the secret sauce. Right. It's not the one size fits all. You got to get clear on how clear on how your energy is functioning. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah, it's right. so fun to come from that space to a coaching yeah. conversation. Like I know who I am and I know how I'm wired. Yeah. And now coach me in a way that feels good that I, I know kind of how to access my awareness. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And for folks that don't know, I'm Dr. Jean Kreft. I'm a psychologist turned mental wellness and consciousness coach. And I love coaching folks on getting clear with the energy that they're perceiving and being able to communicate with it. So it isn't just like, well, this is the right thing to do. This is the wrong thing to do. No, what's going to light you up and what pops for you energetically. So where do we start? So authority. So what is authority in human design? Why is it even relevant? I was like, ooh, this would be a really interesting thing to talk about between that. Yeah, decision. this was one of those, like, uh, you were like, I'm up in the middle of the night, and I have this idea, and these things go together. It's like, connect the dots for me. Yeah, and then, then I'm like, how did they do <laughs> It was so, so good. It's, for you. Yeah. We're going to play with it. Mm -hmm. um, so we all make decisions every day, all day long. We all know this, right? And, like, decision fatigue is a real thing. And... Um, what's so interesting is that we're often making decisions from the mind and the mind is saying like, this is good or bad or right or wrong. Like you were just saying, like, what's correct here? What am I supposed to do? What's the right choice? And so what's so cool in human design is they say, okay, well, what if the mind were not the driver of the vehicle, which is you, your body, what yeah. if it were instead the passenger and it were giving you insights? Mm -hmm. But the driver of the vehicle is your body, is your authority. So mm -hmm. I love that it, we use the word authority in human design because it's saying like the authority is never outside of yourself. You are always your own authority. And so there are eight different types of human design authority and we're all wired with one of them. It's not just you get to be like, oh no, I'm that one. I choose that one. It's like, yeah, this is how, Natural. This is how you're yeah, exactly. That's a lot more. I thought there were like two or three and there are way more. <laughs> You're like, like, can you just like go over all the authorities? It's like, how much time do you want to spend? We're going to stay 101 here. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to stay simple. Um, but all of the authorities, the decision-making strategies is essentially what we call them in human design for business. So authority equals decision-making strategies. So all of yeah. the decision-making strategies live in the body. And so the top three are emotional authority. Uh, sacral authority and splenic authority. Okay. So I'm just going to like briefly cover what yeah, those three are. And then, yeah, and then we can kind of like dive into what does it look like when you can't feel these or yes, aren't exactly. in your body? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So emotional, emotional authority is when you are riding an emotional wave. So what this looks like is you create consistent access to emotions within your body and you tend to, when making decisions, ride high highs low lows and then have calm clarity so what that mm -hmm. looks like is like oh my god i'm so excited i get to do this thing and i like, can't wait to do it and then it looks like i never want to do that oh my gosh i'm gonna die if i do that it's gonna take so much time and energy so you're like 100 percent in 100 mm percent -hmm. out and then you've got this like calm clarity where you're kind of not in the wave the tumultuous feeling and emotion of the decision and it's like almost like a wave in the ocean right it builds it crashes and then there's calm seas 
Yeah. And they're actually designed to make the decision in the 80% sureness, in the calm clarity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say not in like the, what type, what types are, tend to be emotional authority? Um, emotional authority is the only one that can be um, projectors, reflectors, or not reflectors. Reflectors are the only ones who can't have emotional authority. So projectors, okay. manifestors, manifesting generators, and generators oh, can everyone. all have okay. emotional authority. So um, reflectors are the only ones that can't have it. But mm-hmm. it's almost like 50% of the population has emotional authority. Yeah. That's so, really interesting. Go ahead. No, keep going, because I, I, like, the whole <laughs> world's like, do this, like, get in when you're really excited about something, it's like, mm, but that doesn't work for people who have emotional authority. Yeah, I'm just thinking on just so many different levels, when I've talked about, like, kind of the difference between ego and intuition, and ego tending to be, like, lots of charge, and lots of, you know, ups and downs, so I can see how that can lead to the, almost the extreme in the emotions, where you're starting to feel things really deeply, Versus your intuition is that, you know, or awareness is just a whisper. It's just like this subtle knowing and so quiet that it's not going to be in the big highs and lows. It's going to be in meditation or when you're going for a walk or like, you know what I mean? When you're just kind of in that neutral or like socially engaged, safe nervous system state is what I'm getting for that one. Okay. It's almost like when you've forgotten about it. You're like, oh yeah, I haven't thought about that in a while. Uh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you like miss your exit on the freeway because you were thinking about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's almost, it's funny because a lot of the emotional authority people that I talk to say, oh, I didn't know, like, I just thought I was indecisive. And it's like, ooh, like, what could it look like to change that judgment on yourself around being mm-hmm. like what decisive looks like and know that you don't have to be 100% sure and your decision is just as valid at your 80% emotionally detached, like, calm, clear knowing as someone's, like, riled up charge yes is. Right. So it's like, yeah, you need to look at what that looks like. Well, and there's something about the hundred percent sure. Cause I'm like, have I even ever experienced that? I sense there's like always some sort of like unknown piece to it. So it's like, yeah. that's what I get. People almost need to start to get comfortable with is like, well, people are waiting until everything's in place. And again, this can kind of be a trauma response in the sense of we want a lot of control because trauma mm-hmm. is the ultimately the ultimate unexpected event to happen to us. So it's like then in service, we're going over and trying to control a lot of things when, when we're, what you're saying is like kind of being at this 80%, meaning there is this 20% of, I don't really know, and being willing to be okay with that discomfort. Yeah. And I think too, I think it's kind of fun to look at from a trauma perspective from a young age, if you were taught not to feel your feelings, like it was Mm -hmm. not okay for you to experience those big highs and those big lows. So you've been operating in this, like, I'm not allowed to have these. Yeah. I got to be neutral all the time. Right. And then it's like, well, can you even feel what the difference is in your body when you are going to the body to make these decisions to go from that 80%? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So emotional authority, emotional authority, top one, (laughs) sacral authority. Um, The next most common. So sacral authority is, you can only have this if you are a generator or a manifesting generator. Okay. Yes. You're a sacred authority, which is so fun. Um, so exciting. <laughs> so exciting. So that is really when your body is responding, right? We're not using our mind and justifying yeah. and logicing through all of the ways that we're going to make this decision that is right and good. We're, we're dropping into the body and we're asking ourselves yes or no questions if you're a sacred mm-hmm. authority. When mm-hmm. you give your body more than three options, you automatically go to your mind. Your body's like, I don't know how to respond to you on this, homie. Like, I, there's too many things to decide from and choose. Like, we're just going to go yeah. up here. So to drop back down, you get to ask yourself yes or no questions. Like, do you want pizza? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Versus the, what do you want for dinner? And it's like, I literally have every option that's within door dashing to my home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know what I want, right? Yeah. So, they, and I'm using that as like a funny example, but it's just so relatable. Like asking a sacral generator what they want for dinner is like the worst question you can ask because the answer you is You need to I tell my know. husband that because <laughs> he's a chef ultimately and like it's always like, oh. what do you want? And I'm like, so now I'm just kind of like, I need options just to limit it. And then I can just choose now that I've leaned more into that of just the, mm, or like, Ugh, rather than right, wrong, this food's good, this food's bad. And just listening to that has just created so much more ease versus me than almost going into like paralyzation of like, I need to get the right answer. 
Yeah. And like, so. this is good for me or whatever, you know, like you were just saying mm-hmm. like the judgment around the good foods, bad foods, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. The yes or no questions. And it's a body based reaction. It's not a mental, Oh, that, that, that feels right. It's, it's no, my body is like leaning towards this is a, uh-huh or it's uh uh-uh. what does your body do? Does it expand or does it contract? What does a yes feel like? Remember the last time that you had like a solid yes and you're like, Ooh, I know this is the next step. Like not, yeah. I know the outcome. Right. Not, I can, I know all the steps to get there. Yeah. Yes. This is the next right step. So, okay. So before I've taught the sway test a lot to folks kind of help them get in touch with, you know, muscle testing in touch with their intuition. Is that something all authorities can learn and do even if sacral is not their main response? I feel like, yeah. Um, okay. The only thing that I would just kind of be aware of is like, if you're asking as an emotional authority and you have that real emotional charge going on, mm-hmm. it's like, just maybe take a, do it t- like to it like one, one day and another the next day, like impulsive decisions are not best for emotional authority. So like giving Gosh. yourself time and space is better. So if you're talking about like, what are you going to have for lunch? And you're like, well, Lauren, I'm not going to wait till tomorrow to eat lunch. <laughs> like I'm going to eat right now. <laughs> yeah. Then go ahead and use it in smaller decisions. But like for bigger decisions, you definitely want to like give yourself some time and space to ride your emotional wave. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And with sacral, is there as much like up and down as the emotional or it's more just that we're, I mean, it's like listening to the body versus allowing the emotions. Then, Okay. Gotcha. It's listening to the body and it's in the moment, right? Like mm-hmm. we're not making I decisions see. for 42 steps in the future. We're making decisions for right now. And what happens is right now and then right now and then right now and then right now gets you to that future place. And there's no way that you could have prophesized it or like planned it to end up as perfectly as it's going to correctly yeah as if you just follow your body and choose in the moment which is so fun because like all of your stuff is around like choosing yourself okay well what could that look like to choose yourself based on your authority and not based on what you think other people want and need from you I love that. Yeah. Cause it's like within access consciousness, um, you know, the idea is that choice creates awareness. So when you choose, you'll get more information, right? It's like you have so much, you can have awareness of the energy ahead of time and then you can choose to follow that and then see what that creates. Right. And generally that something that is expansive or light kind of whooshes is going to create greater in some degree. Now I had a conversation with a client earlier today and I was saying, you know, it doesn't mean that that's like, just because that feels light doesn't mean like, that is the right job, or that's going to be your dream house or whatever. Like maybe you apply for the house and it goes through. Then you get more information of, oh, actually I didn't really want to live there or really need a garage or whatever it is. Right. But it's like, you kind of had to go that through that experience to get more information. So I can see how that really like resonates with the sacral, but not necessarily as much with the emotional since there needs to be kind of more space and time for it. Yeah. It's, it's that's I love that because it's like okay you're creating awareness and then you're moving forward and then you're creating awareness and you're moving forward and you're what's cool about sacral is you're allowing yourself to move forward versus Mm. figuring it all out in your mind especially like with the home situation right it's like well it needs to be in this neighborhood it needs to be this and it needs to be this and it needs to be this versus like looking at pictures on Zillow and being like "Uh uh 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 and it like Maybe going to check that out, you'll meet the neighbor and they'll be like, oh, I know this other person down the road that has, you know, like you never know how that's going to unfold. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. helpful for me because it's like, it really, you know what I mean? And that's kind of how I can choose a lot faster now being a sacral authority because before I was just blinded by the judgment and we'll talk more about like trauma responses and that, but that, and that was like, yeah slowing things down big time okay so spleen it the other major yeah. one and and before i move to spleen it, i just want to make sure okay. like we we talk about when we talk about the trauma responses like if you are a sacral authority and you're like i don't feel my body i can't feel my gut i don't get an uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to talk about that because that's a yeah. really really common one okay yeah. so then splenic or splenic i've heard it pronounced how do you oh, okay <laughs> or in uh, human design for business we call it because we try and like make it super applicable for the people who are like woo averse <laughs> right so we talk about it as, like <laughs> your instinctive knowing function <laughs> right and so for those folks what that really looks like it's a quiet voice or feeling it's just like a knowing in the mm. moment mm-hmm. before your mind gets involved And so that quiet whisper that you talk about that's different than ego, that really, really applies 
to splenic people. And so spleen, splenic people can either be projectors or manifestors. Um, generators and manifesting generators can't be splenic. They're either going to be sacral or emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really this like quiet voice or this like, it's, it's so interesting because it's a body-based sensation and people who have splenic have described it in a whole bunch of different ways. And it's always based on like a sense. Either they just have a knowing or they hear something that's like a voice of like, go this way. Like you almost picture it like you're driving down the freeway and something tells you to change lanes. And then there's a huge accident where your car exactly mm-hmm. would have been. It's like the survival instinct, this instinctive knowing it's, this is correct for me in this moment. And it doesn't always make logical sense. None of these actually. Well, yeah. usually <laughs> make logical really sense. <laughs> Well, okay. Is it possible then for people to have multiple of these? Because I get the sense that like, oh, I I can have that awareness, but more in the sense of sacral authority is my listed authority, that that's my dominant one that I would lean on for making decisions. Yeah. I love to explain this as almost like every one of your centers. So all of the centers are functions that have to do with something. So say you have a defined spleen, which people who have splenic authority have a defined spleen, but you say you have a defined spleen, but you're also a sacral authority person. So you're like, wait, but I have both. I like to think of each of the centers at a table and at the top of the table, there's a judge and the judge has the gavel, the gavel, and they're the ones that's making the decisions. Like we're either moving forward or we're not moving forward. Everyone gets a say at the table, but the thing that's making Mm. the decision, which we're moving forward is your authority is the, is the judge or the gavel. Yeah. 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 Okay. I can get that. And it, it tends to be more obvious, especially, you know, my experience with the sacral because it's that mm, like, even as you're talking when I'm like, Oh, you know, it's just like natural for it to come out um, yeah. versus it almost takes for me to get quiet, to tune into, let's say a, a splenic instead, like that knowing of before the ego, it's definitely mm-hmm. not my dominant or it would take some effort, I guess, to choose that way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 not something that you have to consciously choose your authority. It's like naturally what shows up. Right. And so then we can talk about how trauma can sometimes get involved. And then we don't have consistent access. Like we feel like we don't have access to that. So that's like, because they're all in the body and trauma also lives in the body. Yes. <laughs> that You're like, happen. see the connection? <laughs> see? Yeah. See the connection so- that you came up with in the middle of the night that we got back there. Yeah, and I was like, wait, what? Yes, so, okay, so bringing this to trauma, because we want to talk about it in the sense of when we're dysregulated, we're not going to be able to access our authority as well, or it's going to be pretty pretty buddy. Um, so looking at trauma from a holistic perspective, trauma, yes, is held in the body at a cellular level, and that means it's going to disrupt a lot of things. One, putting our nervous system, the main one, into some sort of fight or flight, even as baseline. Um, because I think some folks don't even realize that that is their baseline, that they're just on edge or they struggle with insomnia or things like that. So if we're in the state of stress, we don't have access to those more subtle knowing whispers or even P something with emotional authority of being able to navigate those calm waters. Because if we're just highly emotionally reactive, how do we get in touch with these? So that's where I was like wanting to look at, okay, so trauma affects that. And then also affects us going into a lot of judgment about deciding if something is safe or not safe or good or bad. And so we're really focused on a lot of contrast there that again, we don't have access to all of the information because our body's just almost like mm, the vibrational frequency is not going to match what we would be able to access via authority. Yeah. And something that, you know, you've taught me is around like, being in the mind versus being in the body and like Uh if we are dysregulated and then we're operating from up here and you're like okay no go go back down (laughs) we're we're out here so if someone does feel kind of unsafe being in their bodies being able to access that authority whether that be their sacral response and they're like hey i don't have a sacral response or being present in the moment as a spleen being like okay i'm here in my body hearing feeling knowing before my mind gets involved or even for me, like I was sharing with you, I have self-projected authority, which is where I talk things out. Well, I know that <laughs> through getting real woo here, but like through past life regressions, that I've been yeah. in many lifetimes where I've been, it's been unsafe for me to speak like my truth, yeah. or I've had to keep secrets or I've been executed for sharing things. Right. And so it's like, oh, okay, well, if all of that trauma is coming into this life currently, or just from your childhood, it's like, 
how can we get into the body and feel safe being in our body so we can actually access that authority? Mm. All the past life regressions. Yes. Like all <laughs> had something else and then it ran away from me. Um, well, I was looking at like, you kind of, as you were talking, like thinking about, okay, like how we suppress when you're talking about how you like, you know, obviously it's like, if you had all those past traumatizing lifetimes, you're not able to express yourself. Similarly with sacral, in the sense of like m even making those audible sounds. I remember when first learning about human design, there was like encouragement to like allow yourself, like release those sounds. People are so used to suppressing like everything about them or their mannerisms. Or again, if we're like in all the way down in shutdown mode with the nervous system, then it's like all of that, it, all of that expression is gonna be dampened. So then even more challenging to be able to access it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. Like even picturing like little generators in preschool who are like, mm -hmm, mm -mm, and like, they're like, yeah. hey, be quiet. Like you can't make yeah. noises, right? Like from a really, really young age. Yeah. You have to suppress that natural stuff that kind of comes up. Yeah, yeah. And then how would this be related to, okay, so let's look at like emotional authority and regarding when there's like trauma and how that stops people. How do you usually facilitate people through that if they're having trouble accessing it? Yeah, so emotional authority is interesting, right? Because it's like oftentimes, especially with men, um, yeah. I see it with women too, but like with men, it's like, it wasn't okay to show your feelings. Like, so there's just been this like constant suppression or like even for like, you know, don't cry, like for girls, like, yeah. you know, stop crying. Like, why are you so dramatic? Why are you so emotional? And so then like suppressing themselves to not be, not be emotional, not be perceived as emotional, not be seen as. And so like being, I know that like an ex, as you love to say, like, are you willing to be seen that way? <laughs> like, yeah, really yeah. The work of like, are you willing to be seen as emotional? Are you willing to be seen as dramatic? Are you, are you willing to allow yourself to feel into what comes naturally within your body? How are those emotions showing up and where are they showing up? And just sit with them without having to fix them, without having to like, you know, explain yourself or justify what you're feeling. It's like, okay, I'm feeling this and this is where it's showing up. Like, can you just get back in the body to mm. feel the feelings? So I, yeah, I'm curious because it's like, you know, if people are taught to like suppress emotions in general, then would you say if like you're an emotional authority and you have naturally suppressed almost like the release of them or what is it that the expression of them gives you access to is what I'm wondering. I feel like it's a, a differentiation of what you're actually feeling when you're deciding because your decision-making strategy or your authority is present in your body. So if you're like constantly holding back and like not allowing yourself to feel things, yeah. how are you supposed to know the difference between I'm in like a really charged state or like I'm 80% sure it's all kind of like, you know, nude, like neutral. It's like, well, mm -hmm. how are you tapping into you're knowing what your body is trying to communicate with you through emotions. And you're like, stop yeah. talking to me. Stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. Right. Yeah, exactly. I will not listen. Okay. But I, I'm curious for you, like what, from, from your perspective, from the trauma and access point of view, and even from, like from a therapy point of view, like when people are like not feeling their feelings, like what would you? Well, okay. Share? Yeah. In fact, yeah. What's really interesting is um, within the access kind of framework, so to speak, feelings are thought of as just really differently in the sense of the whole premise is you being an infinite being and you can just look at would an infinite being have feelings? Well, the actual higher harmonic or what infinite beings would experience would be sensing, knowing, being, and receiving. Mm. Like those are the higher harmonics of thinking, feeling, right, emoting, and all of that. And yeah. so that it's just interesting because when you start to function from that, feelings are, you know, from what they've said in Access, and there was like just this amazing like three-day class that just blew my head open about it, but seeing feelings as a way to control others. Mm. When someone goes into, you may be mad, it's like, can you challenge that? So you just kind of, you want to look at it as like, what is the functionality of the feeling? What is the feeling actually creating? And I mean, you know, obviously coming from a psychological perspective as well and seeing how all this interacts, 
you know, feelings can be fueled by a thought process that you're telling yourself or that you're tuning into, right? And so if we're tuning into a limiting belief or a thought that is not so helpful, if it's going into a lot of judgment of ourselves, that's really going to activate the feelings. And so I'm curious about like kind of how that ties in to emotional authority, especially if someone is struggling with a lot of limiting beliefs or just programming that is not so helpful. Cause would that not affect their feeling experience yeah, more? Sure. And I'm so that's super interesting because I'm like separating like the feeling from the story that we have about the feeling, like mm -hmm. the, or the thought that we have about the feeling to when I talk about the feeling, the body based feeling, it's just what's, what's happening in your body. Are you yeah. charged? Are you activated? Not like the why. And then, you know, we, we all tend to do that as humans, right? We spiral and yeah. we think of more things that make us upset when we're upset. And then it's just like, okay, well now we are creating this like typhoon of emotion, but it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Like, what does it look like to, for emotional authority? Sometimes you might wake up in a low, low, mm -hmm. not necessarily because of anything, just like, hmm, this feeling in my body feels heavy. Or it feels like, you know, what, whatever feeling or emotion, it feels green. It feels whatever, whatever the emotion is in your body. And just being able to sit with it without having to name it, judge it, label it, just feel it. Yeah, right. Because that's like what we're taught in psychology is like, you need to label it and, and feel it. Well, in the sense of like really milk it, which I also don't get is so helpful. Like I get kind of more the way you're describing it as like, just almost like allow it, allow it to move through your yeah. body, allow it to move through like weather. You know, it's like, you don't necessarily have a point of view or a judgment about the weather and you just allow the storm to come through and move on. Right. Which is going to create more ease versus us going into a lot of judgment about it. Which is what With, you were saying before about higher, like higher beings. Yeah. Perceive it. Mm -hmm. So what if it's just like something you're perceiving in your physical body because you're a human here on earth and not mm -hmm. something that you need to like judge or fix? Yeah. Yes. And with, okay. So with emotional authority, would you also be more like sensitive to the kind of collectives emotions or energies? So what's so what's interesting is actually when you don't have emotional authority, you're, you tend to be more sensitive to yeah. the collective okay. because when you have emotional authority that means your emotional center is defined so you have consistent access to your own emotions you're riding your own emotional wave and your body is like having sensations of feelings right that move through you kind of consistently right like you have access to them you're experiencing them consistently and so with energy and aura dynamics what we look at is that when you have an undefined center emotional center the way that that works is you're taking in other people's energy of those centers and you're amplifying them. Mm. So we're actually going to find that if you don't have emotional authority, you're going to be feeling other people's and collective stuff more yeah. often than you are your own. And so then those questions of access that are so fun to ask, like, who does this belong to? Yeah. <laughs> Please tell me. Like, no, I don't need oh. to know. Just send it off. <laughs> Oh, it's just, it's just not mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I get that tool just more and more dynamically every single day. And literally every time I talk to my groups and whatnot, because it's just like every time, did you ask who does this belong to? God, I forgot, you know, or it's like, yes, I'm just getting it at this different level where we have been taught so dynamically that everything is ours and to personalize everything. It's like, take responsibility, your thoughts, your feelings, it's all yours. And so it's like, we don't, yeah, okay, ask who's this belong to, but no, really, did you ask? Because the energy most of the time lightens up. There's always a good portion that is just not yours. Because if we're, you know, these kind of radio receivers picking up information all day long, and now that I know, apparently with being sacral, that I'm going to feel it more, you know, it's like, yeah. Yes. And then it's like, well, the whole, what are you aware of conversation? Like, that's beautiful too, because you're aware of all this energy that you're picking up on that's outside of yourself that you can't explain yeah right it's like I don't know why but it's just like a, it's a no or I you know it's it's like you can kind of sense into that um and I think what's super cool too and we don't have to go down this rabbit hole but I'm just gonna like drop the seed of this is like that center our emotional center that's where in human design our nervous system lives so right of course <laughs> So if you have an undefined emotional center, so if you don't have emotional authority, if you don't have emotional mm -hmm. authority, 
automatically have, um, you know, an undefined sacral center or um, emotional center, solar plexus. So, so when you are like zero to seven and yeah. you're around people, so 50% of the population has a defined emotional center and you're kind of taking on, oh, this, my mom isn't saying something, but I can feel something's off, right? I'm perceiving that as a child and yeah. I don't have words or language for it of like an emotional landscape that's kind of developing in you and in your nervous system from zero to seven. And so you're just kind of like, well, nothing, even if nothing majorly traumatic happens in your life, it's like, what is your baseline nervous system? Where did you grow up? Who are you around? And how can you kind of like regulate from that place? I kind of did go down the rabbit hole, but I just think that's so fascinating. Well, it is because, I mean, it's certainly if we're seeing everything as electrical, like your emotions being electrical and then it coming from this place that also manages the nervous system. I mean, because I kind of see it as like the nervous system is the orchestrator of the symphony that is the body. So it's like constantly conducting to make sure everything's in this, you know, copacetic state. And if we're activated too much we're in fight or flight too long a sympathetic state or we're all the way down dorsal vagal of like a shutdown states when you're really challenging to access any of these you know your authorities and whatnot so i guess singular since you have one but <laughs> what do you what do you teach folks with you know regarding nervous system and gain in touch with their authority yeah so I don't know, this is, I, I could go so many different ways with this one. So <laughs> as, a proje- as a projector with an undefined um, solar plexus center, an undefined emotional center, what that really looks like for me is I have this undefined sacral and these undefined, this undefined emotional centers. And I, wor- I work with a lot of, of projectors. So what this often looks like is, okay, well, what does it look like to look at where you are creating, doing, people pleasing and then like overcompensating because those two centers really like when undefined it's like I need to do more so that I can be perceived a certain way so that I can please yeah. others so that I don't have to fix it kind of thing so that's like one way we can go down in it but the other is like this undefined this undefined um, emotional center is really it's like the way that you kind of know you're out of alignment or it's like not self is when we talk okay. about um, that you are avoiding conflict and like avoiding hard conversations and not willing to kind of like say what's bothering you. Like you don't want to rock the boat essentially because what Uh happens when you rock the boat is somebody else's feelings might be triggered and then you have to feel that. So it's actually a super selfish act to not engage in those conversations. You're like, I just don't want to deal with the repercussions (laughs) of what happens here because then I have to feel it. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's noticing like, where are you staying stuck and small and people pleasing so that you don't get that result and really what's on the other side of having those conversations. And I'm like my first student in that, like primary student in that is something that I'm like still working on and we'll, we'll continue to be working on like forever, forever working on it. (laughs) They say like the keywords are like avoiding confrontation and truth, um, Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. undefined emotional center. Yeah. And it's also really interesting. Like my mom would say that I'm the most emotional person in my family, but I'm the only one that has an undefined emotional center. I'm like, yeah, because I'm taking in all of your guys' stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame it on me. This isn't even mine. <laughs> I asked who's it belong to. It said you. <laughs> yeah, it's yours. It's yours. Uh, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, and for what I teach regarding nervous system, it's more on the sense of how can you soothe yourself enough so that you can get quiet enough to hear whatever it is that you need the peaceful middle center, the oohs and ahs, things like that. So it might look like doing breath work regularly or dancing it out. It's all about just like getting the energy out of your body. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be the sit down and meditation, although that is helpful too, for us to kind of regulate it only if we're at a more regulated state, then can we do something like that? But really, it's helpful for people to look at nervous system regulation like hygiene. So doing it like you brush your teeth, kind of to get ahead of it. I mean, we're just like constantly bombarded with stressors and traumatic like situations that, you know, it's easy for us to just activate constantly and then never come down if we're not proactively doing something about it. Or rather than just reactionary, you know, doing it after the fact when I'm like too stressed, when the water's already boiling over, you know, it's just going to take longer to come down. So when we can get clear on those cues 
earlier on, we're able to like catch it sooner, regulate sooner, and ultimately then have access to these authority centers so we can make decisions with ease. Because like, what do people go into but all this judgment about trying to get it right and then they're just paralyzed in like a freeze response. Oh yeah, that's so good. And just like to be clear, I would recommend nervous system regulation for both emotional and <laughs> non-emotional. For like, everyone. For like literally everyone because yeah. it's, it was taken on in childhood as well, right? It's like, what could that look like if it is that electrical circuit? And being like, okay, well, what's my baseline? What's my new baseline? Could I make my baseline? Mm -hmm. Could I make, make my window of tolerance for this even larger, even wider? Yeah. Could I allow more? Um, and so like, I love all of your tools for the nerves. I've, I've taken her nervous system class. That's it's a great, great resource um, <laughs> to be like, okay, well, if I'm not in reactionary mode and I'm not in my mind and I'm not triggered and I'm not like thinking through the, what the right answer will be because I don't want to be judged because I don't want to upset the status quo because, because, because anytime you say like, because in certain mm -hmm. things, you're in your mind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, exactly. And with trauma, there tends to be a lot of reliance on the mind and the energy body not even being in the body. So being more difficult even to access, like being able to when make you, decisions with you. When you say like not even in the body, I'm curious like yeah. what that looks like and shows up as for you. Yeah, it's almost like when I'm working with someone and I am looking at them, it's like their energy body is like right off to the side or just maybe even higher up. It just, you can tell there's something about the body energetically doesn't feel as like connected, I guess I want to say it. It's just, it's, it's hard to describe. Um, but there's, it's almost like this really mild dissociative response where it's like just not being fully present because, and there's just so much to be aware of at any given time. And when folks are particularly sensitive, that's really challenging to navigate. So if, if you did notice that, what would be like kind of the first thing you would recommend is would that be nervous system mm -hmm. work yeah it might it would look more like maybe like cold exposure something like mm -hmm. that to like create the dive reflex to just bring people back right away or just getting present with like describing their surroundings um just like kind of what they're seeing perceiving just kind of getting them back into using actually using the sensations of their body to just encourage them to get back it can take some practice and some time though of this work for just the body settle down almost to feel like it's safe enough to relax and come down. And that's why it's like, as you do this work, you'll find deeper baselines that you can access maybe in like meditation or something like that. Oh, wow. My nervous system is so soothed right now. It's like, what would it take to be more of that throughout your day? Just because it's easier on the body ultimately and feels better. Yeah. We have to like be in these human bodies for this lifetime. That's why we came here. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's one of the things mm -hmm. I believe. We came here to have this human experience in these bodies. It's a rental car. Experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very long rental. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, okay. So what's your, like, for, like, making decisions in general, what's your kind of takeaway tip, would you say? Or is it going to be specific okay. to the authority? It would, well, my first one would be, like, find out what your authority is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, well, yeah. yeah. Find out what your authority is. And then can you start? So we, what's really fun is that um, in human design, we call it an experiment. Like human design is an experiment. So like, what could it look like for you to play with this rather mm -hmm. than be like, okay, well, now I know that it's this and I can never make another decision that it's not based on my authority. And if I do make a decision based on my head, then I'm bad and wrong and judge like, right, then, then we're in our heads again. Then we're like yeah. trying to perfect this process. Um, and I attract a lot of beautiful perfectionists, like recovering one myself. So it's like, where can you not try and make this like the perfect thing? But where can you play with living into your body a little bit more, playing with your authority? Hey, what does my body feel like when I'm in a yes? What does my body feel like when I'm in a no? And then for when you get the yes or the no, or sometimes you don't hear a response or you don't feel a response. And oftentimes yeah. that can just be an indicator of not right now, because mm -hmm. what our authority is telling us is you have the energy for this. We have the energy. We're ready to go. This is your next right step. So can you just kind of like release the pressure of having to decide all the things all at once and just choose one? So that was like that. 17 things instead of one. But, <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> well, I'll get folks one. I would say um, really getting out of judgment is huge because if you're just focused on getting the right choice, you will ultimately go into a paralyzation mode or a freeze mode. Um, and so 
this I had gotten through access consciousness was to function from a yes, no universe, which is kind of what you're saying in the sense of following the energy that pops and whooshes to give you the next information from the next step and the next step and the next step um, versus something that's like heavy and contracted, you know, might create a little tougher time, you could still choose it and choice creates awareness. So. And what if your pop and whoosh have different flavors based off of your authority? Mm -hmm. Like your pop as a splenic being might be a quiet whisper. Your whoosh as a self-projected person might be the way your voice sounds when you say yes to something. Like allow it to be yours. Yeah. Like, yeah. Rather than like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I guess it's supposed to pop. So I guess, I guess. he's saying yes to this. <laughs> That's judgment, folks. <laughs> yeah. But these are all things we like teaching our programs. What are you doing right now? I am doing a, a manifester magic, which is working with yeah. manifestors, which is a, oh gosh, what is it? We call it a mastermind, but it's like a mastermind because we're not using our minds here, people. We're using our bodies. Master um, body. Yeah, master body. Sounds Ooh, so weird, I guess. Fun. <laughs> Style. Master body. People think it's like a yoga program. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, that's what I've got going on right now. So if you're a manifester and you know that about yourself and it sounds interesting and fun and exciting to you, reach out. What about you? Awesome. Awesome. Well, I have my Choosing You program going, which is just basically taking folks through all the healing stages in order to get clarity on their purpose and be able to then monetize it and magnetize abundance and feel fulfilled and all the things that I think folks are really craving right now. Um, and I just get that a a lot of folks when they talk about purpose or teach it, they don't talk about really all the healing elements that are required because once you go through that, rather than like seeking for your purpose now, once you go through kind of all the healing elements, then you're just in a totally different place and your purpose might look different. It's not like you have one purpose is, you know, for your entire life, it's more like it evolves with you. And so I think that's really important to take folks through. So people are paying to explore more of that. I'd love to have you. That's so fun, especially when we talked to just now about like making decisions from a place mm -hmm. where if you're not in your body, how are you supposed to make decisions about what your purpose is and how you're moving forward? Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. So that's why I have the like cultivating safety, nervous system, trauma responses are literally like the first couple weeks because that's the only way, right? <laughs> it's the only way. It's the only way. All right, y'all. Thanks for joining us. We're here every two Thank weeks you. and uh, chatting human design, psychology, access, and all those fun things. So let us know if you have any questions or future topics you want us to talk about. Ooh, yeah, fun. <laughs> all right, lady. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.